Savannah, Georgia is known for its mossy oaks, grand squares, and colonial charm. And whether you're looking to relax in history or enjoy great nightlife, Savannah has you covered. Today, we're walking you through the top things you need to see and do when you visit Savannah, Georgia. The first spot on our list that you'll need to check out if you're visiting Savannah is Forsyth Park. Forsyth Park is a beautiful park that's walkable from the main downtown area and is home to the iconic white fountain that Savannah is known for. Here you'll find stunning mossy oak lined paths flanked by large grassy fields. You'll also see many old statues and monuments that create a one of a kind atmosphere. This is a lively place to take a stroll or sip a coffee for a relaxing day in Savannah. So we are in Forsyth Park. It's about 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday right now and there's actually a lot of people here. There's some vendors selling cool artwork, plenty of kids playing on the playground and everybody's just enjoying a nice little Sunday stroll through the park. We're leaving Forsyth Park now and I think that might have been the best park I've seen in America. Like it's so perfectly planned, like it's almost out of like a Disney World resort. Yeah, one of a kind spot. While near Forsyth Park, it's a great time to check out the Mercer Williams house. This is a beautiful mansion packed with history. You can purchase tickets behind the building in the old carriage house if you'd like a tour inside. So we're at the Mercer Williams house. It's located right off of Monterey Square, really near Forsyth Park. And this house has a lot of history. So believe it or not, if you've seen the movie Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, this is the house from the movie with the iconic murder there. There's been a murder in Savannah. This has a little spot in my heart. My uncle actually worked on that movie. So to be able to see it in real life, really exciting experience. Next up on our list is River Street. River Street is a lively part of the downtown that's packed with shops and restaurants. If you're looking to pick up a souvenir for your time in Savannah, this is the place to do it. Or if you're looking to grab a bite to eat, we sampled some of the iconic food to try here in our Savannah food tour. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. And another fun thing to do here in this area is to catch a riverboat cruise. We've heard these are really nice at sunset and can provide you with a great view of the beautiful architecture from the water. If you're interested, we'll link a site in the description box where you can purchase tickets. Overall, River Street is a beautiful place to take a stroll, and if you walk far enough down the waterway, you'll encounter one of the Riverwalk's most iconic statues, the Waving Girl. Parallel to River Street is our next spot you'll need to check out, and that's Bay Street. Bay Street is a gorgeous mossy oak lined street with great architecture and parks. Along the walkway, you'll find iron bridges that overlook the river and elevated walkways that carry you above the alleyways below. This is another street that's great to wander if you're looking to find a bite to eat or check out some local shops. Walking up and down Bay Street just feels so historic with all the history and the old timey architecture. It feels like you're walking down Main Street Colonial USA. So it's about 7.30 right now. We're walking on this little walkway between River Street and Bay Street and there's all these little shops here. All the gas lights lining this walkway and the mossy oaks. This is a beautiful part of Savannah. And if all of this sounds like a lot of walking, this next thing you're gonna love and that's taking a trolley tour of Savannah. This is a great way not only to see all the sites and get your bearings in Savannah, but also to learn the history too. The trolley drivers are experts in Savannah history. They'll be sharing facts and stories along the way. You can book trolley tours as either a hop on, hop off experience, meaning you can get on and off the trolleys all you want, or you can book them for a hundred minute continuous tour. To board the trolleys, you'll need to head over to the Savannah History Museum, which is the first stop on the tour. And while it's a great spot to start your trolley tour, we personally felt the museum was rather small and not one of our favorite spots. However, it could be worth checking out while at the trolley boarding area if you're a history buff or just want to see the original bench from the movie Forrest Gump. Alternatively, if trolleys aren't your thing, you should try a ghost tour of the city. These are fun ways to learn the history and the darker side of Savannah. There are plenty of options ranging from group walking tours to ghost tours and old converted hearses. We'll link some of these down below if you're interested. If you're looking for the liveliest spot in town for drinks and nightlife, you'll need to head over to the city market area. This spot is a beautiful collection of streets with some great bars and restaurants to visit. If you're here for a bachelorette or some other party weekend, this area is great. An amazing thing about Savannah is if bar hopping is your thing, Savannah has no open container laws, which means you're free to take a to-go cup with you as you bounce from bar to bar. We saw plenty of people having a great time doing this and even enjoying some of the pedal pubs if you like cruising while boozing. If you're looking for a great rooftop bar away from the city market area, the Julian Bar is the tallest rooftop bar in Savannah and offered us some great drinks with stunning views. It was a bit of a hike from the city market area, but was absolutely worth it to catch a sunset from the top. And before we head into the next top thing to do, we want to give a big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Travel isn't just about visiting new places, it's also about discovering yourself and growing personally along the way. And that's one reason why we're so excited to be working with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists 
therapist, and they can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just have to answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, video, or phone call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions whenever it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality as you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash sharing the road. And we'll have this link in the description box below to get started. Now let's jump back to the video. Next on our list is Browden Street, which is an iconic street in Savannah known for its boutique shops and eclectic stores and restaurants. While on Browden Street, you need to stop in and try one of the most famous treats in Savannah, and that's Leopold's ice cream. This old-timey family-owned ice cream parlor has a history dating back over 100 years, and it's a must-stop spot on a hot day. We cover Leopold's at a greater length in our Savannah food tour, so be sure to check out that video if you're looking to check out the iconic foods and restaurants you need to try on your trip to Savannah. If you're looking to take in some of the most picturesque houses in Savannah, you'll need to wander down Jones Street. So right now we're on Jones Street in Savannah. This is referred to as the prettiest street in Savannah and you can clearly see why. There are plenty of huge, historic, beautiful homes here. And to top that all off, the trees are lined with the beautiful Savannah moss. It honestly feels like it's straight out of the 1700s. It's so gorgeous. And if you get hungry while strolling this street, Mrs. Wilkes Dining Room is a family style restaurant on Jones Street where you'll sit with strangers and share a meal around a big table. While near Jones Street, be sure to walk through some of Savannah's 22 famous squares, which the city is known for. Believe it or not, Savannah is one of America's earliest planned cities, with the layout of the whole city being organized around public squares to maximize efficiency and public park space, with the history dating back to the 1730s. And for the Forrest Gump fans, Chippewa Park is a square from the movie where Forrest is waiting for the bus, but as we mentioned earlier, it's no longer there now, and actually they keep it in the Savannah History Museum. So this is one of the benches they used for filming the movie in Forrest Gump. Located near Lafayette Square is the next spot to check out, and that's the Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist. This stuff Stunning Church was completed in 1899 and is an iconic part of Savannah's skyline. The inside features grand stained glass windows and adorned walls and is a beautiful building to pop into while visiting. Another spot that's worth checking out is the Colonial Park Cemetery. Being located just a few blocks from Bay Street and nearby the main downtown area, this park's in a great location. With its crooked tombstones and above ground graves, this is an interesting spot for a stroll. If you like history, there's plenty of placards you can read on Savannah's history and its heroes that are buried here. We are in the Colonial Park Cemetery it's this massive plot with I think over 9,000 graves. There's a couple famous people that are buried here. I think one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence is buried here. It's really nice on a summer day. It's a really nice spot to sit and relax. So it looks like this guy was born July 8th, 1776 in Savannah. So he's probably one of the first true Americans in this country. Pretty cool. So we are back in the cemetery and it is definitely spookier than I can confirm. I don't know if you guys have heard of the Disney sing-along Grim Grinning Ghost, but that's definitely going through my mind right now. Really spooky. And if you are ever a Girl Scout or even just crave Thin Mints as much as Michael does, you'll need to stop by the Juliet Gordon Low House, which is the original birthplace of the founder of the Girl Scouts. If you're interested, they do offer tours of the building as well. So this is the birthplace of Juliet Low. She founded the Girl Scouts and clearly I'm no Girl Scout, but my great grandma was born in 1911 and she was one of the first Girl Scouts in the city of Chicago. So kind of cool seeing the history here. And as an honorable mention, if you're looking to get out of the city for some sunshine and sand, be sure to head over to Tybee Beach, which is about 30 minutes away from the city. We didn't make it there ourselves, but our friends have told us it's a great beach. So that ends our video on the top things to do in Savannah, Georgia. If you found this video even remotely helpful, please do us a favor and hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks, enjoy your trip to Savannah, and we'll see you in the next one. Bro, bro.